Okay, I'm going to make a mold today. This is Tubal Cain returning and my promise that I would make a mold for you. And this particular mold is going to be with uh, three little flat back patterns. We got an engine and a couple parts. And we're laying the flask on there, which I call the cope half, with the handles down. And we're going to sprinkle just a little bit of this parting compound or parting sand on there to keep the sand from sticking to the pattern. And using the riddle, which is nothing more than about an eighth inch sieve, we'll put some uh, freshly mulled sand. And this type of sand does not uh, shake through very well. Some of it will come through, but I generally force, force it through with my hands. Gives me a chance to pick the ladybugs out of here too, who have wintered in my sand. Now, as long as you've got the patterns completely covered with sand, which I now do, then you can just dump in the regular un, uh, unsifted sand. I'm trying to do this as fast as I can so that it will fit within our sand frame. Now I'm going to fill in sand and kind of spread it around and remember where your patterns are so that the one pattern projects kind of high and I want to be careful not to ram it and damage the pattern. You always need a little bit of extra sand because it's going to compact quite a bit when you start ramming it. So we we'll take the rammer and I like to just gently go around to start with. Otherwise the pattern may move around a little bit within the mold. And then take the tapered end, go around the outside. You don't want to over ram it. If you do, the sand will lack permeability, which means that the gases can't get out very well. We're going to put just a little bit more sand in. And at this time, I don't mind using a little bit of the unmulled sand because I'm starting to run out here. And now we're going to time it again. Take the strike off bar, which is just a bar of steel, and strike it off, ladybug. Extra sand goes down into the bin, and now we're ready to flip the mold over. Like that. I kept the board with it so the patterns won't fall out. And there, the first half is done. Be sure and sprinkle some more, sprinkle some more parting sand on there so that the two halves will not stick together. Okay, I've put the two halves of the flask together and the paint is on the other side to show that we match them up when we put them back together. But at this time you've got to decide where you're going to run your sprue because once the sand's in there you may forget that. And I'm going to take this chalk here and I'm going to mark just like some coordinates here where these two lines intersect is where I'm going to put my sprue hole in just a couple minutes. The parting sand is in there and now we are ready to uh, sift and ram the second side. Since this is a bit of a repetition, I will wrap it forward to the next section. Okay, the second half has been rammed up and smoothed and struck off and now I'm looking at where my coordinates are here to uh, put my sprue hole and I'll just kind of run a line across there. I'm doing this more for your benefit than is necessary for me. And then this is the sprue cutter. And we want to go down just halfway. So I'm going to use my thumb as a stop and push it down. and. Out it comes, and that's what I have removed. Take your spoon and make this into a little bit of a funnel. And then it's easy to hit the, the hole. 
Pack that down with your fingers so that uh, no loose sand falls in there later on with the molten metal. Now we're ready to take the two halves apart and I like to tap the cope to the top a little bit in each direction and I'm going to lift this straight up on the pins and there it is. Now we have to remove the pattern, but first we'll cut the gates. There's where the screw is, has come in, and we need a little gate for this piece. It's a real small piece, doesn't take much. And here I'm going to run the gate right into there. And we need a rather heavy one for this. By heavy, I mean thick, because we've got a lot of metal going in there. Now we need to pick those patterns out of there and I just use a drywall screw on these little ones. That'll come out real easy, wiggle a little bit because remember it's tapered, came right out and then this little bearing support for an engine is going to pull out very easily. The other one uh, I'm going to Bang it around a little bit with this brass. This is an aluminum pattern. Now let's see if it'll pull out. And that pulls straight out pretty easily. Take your spoon and uh, deepen the uh, gates a little bit as needed. And then I like to turn the whole thing upside down and blow on it and also take the bellows and make sure we don't have any loose sand in there. If you have any loose sand in the mold it will produce a little cavity. Same on the other side in case you spilled any. And now I'm going to reassemble the two halves. Okay, now the two halves have been reassembled and we have a finished mold. Notice that the colors match up on this side. And this is now ready to pour the molten metal into. And in some cases, if it's a heavy mold, I pour it right here in the molding bench or it can be set down on the floor. Now, in uh, upcoming sessions, I'm going to pour a casting for you, but it may not be this one. It may be another one. Uh, in the next session, I'm going to show you how to make a mold again. There'll be a lot of repetition, but it'll be a split mold rather than a flat back pattern. These were flat back patterns, which are the very simplest of patterns uh, to make, and the molding is rather simple. Tubal Cane saying, so long for now.